Good morning. Welcome to everyone, both in, in the house, as they say, and on Zoom. So we're just so grateful for our, all of us to be together in God's house or virtually with us in spirit. And welcome to everyone on this gorgeous, gorgeous day of God's creation. Now join in singing, Love's Divine, All Love's Excelling. me in the call to worship. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and truth. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere. That we may share God's love and life. May we be renewed in the sufficient spirit of the living Christ. The living Christ is with us. Praise, Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious God, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, we pray that we may be bound together in Christian love and that our faith and fellowship may be a witness through which your spirit will bring others to your church. We humbly thank you for your many blessings you have given us. We ask that we may learn how to truly be Easter people and always remember that we are celebrating Resurrection Day every day, for we pray through Jesus our Christ. Amen. You may be seated. And as you are, I'm going to invite our children to come forward. Let's sing together, Jesus. No, this little light of mine. Like to go to the zoo? Sort of. I love to go to the zoo. This morning I want us to take an imaginary trip to the zoo. I'm going to show you up on the screen a couple of pictures and I want you to tell me who the animals are. Are you ready? Okay, here's our first one. It's an elephant. It's actually a baby elephant. Isn't she cute? An elephant is easy to identify, isn't it? 
It's one of the biggest of all the animals. It's usually gray in color, has a big old long trunk for eating and drinking. And it sometimes has two little tusks on the side of its trunk, doesn't it? That baby doesn't have those yet. I thought she was cute. Okay, ready for the next one? It's a giraffe and guess what? It's a baby too. Look how cute that little baby giraffe is. So um, this one's easy because the giraffe is one of the tallest of all the animals, isn't it? It's got that really long neck. It's tall so we can eat leaves off of a tree and it has a unique spotted pattern. And did you know that it can run up to 35 miles an hour? That's as fast as a car. Pretty cool, huh? All right. The last one, kind of funny looking, isn't it? What is it? It's a rhino or a rhinoceros. Exactly. So how can you tell that that's not an elephant? It's got a horn on its nose instead of a trunk. That's right. Because it's still big and it's still gray in color, but it's the horn. Exactly. I don't think he's a baby because I did find a baby. A picture of a baby rhino, but it didn't have the horn, so I didn't put it up there. But that's just a regular old rhinoceros. You did such a good job with our zoo animals, but I have another question for you. How would you identify a person to know if they're a follower of Jesus or not? Can you look at them and see a big trunk or an, a horn or a long neck? You can't, can you? So how do you think that we can be known as people who follow Jesus. How about with what we do and how we act? If we love people with all of our heart and we show kindness and compassion and we pray for them and we love them and we're empathetic to their needs, guess what? People will notice. They'll see us. And they'll see that we're different and that we act different because we love them. And that's how you can look at a person and tell that they love Jesus. Just like you can look at the animals and tell which animal they are. Would you pray with me? Dear God, help us to live by the new commandment that Jesus left with his disciples. Help us to love others in the same way that Jesus loves us so that others will know that we are his disciples. In his name we pray. Amen. You can go to worship and wonder now. Good morning, church. You're a little spread out, but it's a good crowd for a beautiful Sunday in May. Good to see all of you. Uh, as we come into our time of prayer this morning, I do have, of course, as always, some updates to share with you. Good morning, Zoom folks. I'm sorry, almost forgot about you. Welcome to our service. So locally, we are praying for those in our community who struggle with homelessness, often due to mental illness. May they find mental health resources and shelter. Regionally, we turn to God for guidance as we wrestle as a nation with those things that divide us that we see in the daily news. And yet we have so many more ways in which we are alike as God's creatures here. And globally, today, we lift up the people of Palestine. They long for freedom and peace. We pray for their release from the bondage of occupation. We pray for grace to live in dignity with their Israeli neighbors and help us to accompany them in their quest for justice and liberation. Just for these next few weeks, as I mentioned last Sunday, we're going to pray for a different global ministry partner uh, through our global ministries website um, with the Disciples of Christ. So let us prepare our hearts and minds and sing. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Oh, wait, I have one more announcement, one more prayer request. This came through our website. 
And I do want to make sure that whenever someone reaches out to our website, that we make sure we pray for them. So Stephanie is asking that we pray for God to restore her husband's health. Please pray that he will be able to fulfill God's will for his life. And thank you so much for your prayers. God bless you. Rich. Can we pray for the yes, thank you. Um, just devastating and horrible racial um, crime as 10, is it still 10? 10 victims of the Buffalo shooting. Thank you for reminding me. Are there others? Norm. The divisive abortion issue, not praying for one side or the other, but that there might be peace and peace during this time. Anyone else? Thank you for that reminder as well. Now let's sing, Lacey. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us be faith-filled and desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us people who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. We pray for the church gathered here today, both here and around the world that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. And finally, O oh God, we pray for those who are poor in body and in spirit, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair, especially those we have named aloud as well as the ones who remain unnamed in our hearts and on our minds. Minister by your Spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed, and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The words are there. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. May God add blessing to this hearing, understanding, and living of his word. Would you pray with me? And now, O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This morning, I want to ask you to think about filling up a cup with water. You can fill it only so far, right? Once it has been filled to the brim, what happens when you try to add more water to it? It overflows, of course. The same is true if you take a sponge, submerge it in water, because it becomes so saturated that it can no longer absorb, and it begins to shed what cannot swell it further. I remember when I was in Ireland for three weeks studying the Catholic and Protestant conflict that happened in that country but also doing all the Irish touring and things that you do when you're there for a brief time. I can remember about day 12 or 13 of our 18-day trip, I had become a sponge. I could not hold one more ounce of information, of green rolling hills, of Celtic crosses, or anything else from that country. So can we apply this scientific truth of a cup running over to our human spirit? Can we imagine someone like me, like I was, so saturated with something that she or he can't take in anymore? Like a filled up cup that can only overflow onto others, beginning to fill them. God's love is like this. Picture God's love overflowing from a filled up person to the nearby person who benefits from the overflow. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus saying to his followers, love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. The love that our Lord called them to display has, in my mind, a special definition. Today, we're going to call it Jesus-like love. Jesus-like love. For those who knew him best, It was his love that produced their love for others. It was like water overflowing from a filled up cup. Jesus' love filled them up, and yet he kept on loving them, pouring more love into them so Jesus' love could overflow onto others. 
In the same way, Jesus' love fills us up so we can let the continuing love that God sends to us overflow onto others. Therefore, we can fulfill his commandment, love one another just as I have loved you. Jesus' love is God's love, gracefully and freely given with no strings attached. Sometimes we think of this love as the peace of God that passes all human understanding. And yet in another sense, as in today's gospel, Jesus helps us understand much of that peace-giving love. For God gave us Jesus to show us what divine looks like in human form. God gave us Jesus, who is love, as God is love, so we could see it. See it not so much as a feeling or excitement or emotion or even the longing of one person for another, but rather a love that is known by the life and teachings of one who shares the same humanity with each of us. God's love is, in fact, Jesus, the person. Love in action. Love through his life. It is the love that fills us and overflows from us. It is the sacrificing love of the cross the exemplary love of the Good Samaritan, the caregiving love of the Good Shepherd, the inclusive love that reaches out to outcast and the underserved, the difficult love that embraces our enemies, and the forgiving love of the prodigal son's father. The prayer that we a tribute to St. Francis of Assisi, focuses on this Jesus-like love. It reminds us that love can make us instruments of God's peace, the very active expression of God. It gives love rather than hatred. It is love that seeks faith over doubt. Love that lives through hope rather than despair. Love that promotes joy in the midst of sadness. Love that allows us to die to self so we may be born to eternal life. As soon as Jesus had given his followers this new commandment, to love one another even as he had loved them, he gave them one more thing. He gave them a test to determine if they were indeed overflowing love onto others. The test was to examine the response of those within reach of the overflow. He said, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Many of us know this from the popular hymn that we sang, they'll know we are Christians by our love. As we think about the quality of our lives, however, as we step back to see how others might view us through our actions, What will they see? Will they see in us what Jesus commanded? Will they see that we are so filled with God's love that it overflows onto others? Of course, this testing is not only about us as individuals. Does God's love fill this congregation enough that it overflows to others? How effectively are we acting for the benefit of those in need of God's love in action? How, are, how aware are we that God's love, this Jesus-like love, even fills us at all? 
How well do we help it overflow onto others in the form of active care for others? How well do we measure up to the test by which everyone knows that we are Jesus' disciples because we are carrying out his command? Love one another just as I have loved you you also should love one another. And when we do that, we can all say together, Amen. Each week in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never made that decision before, we invite you to do so today. As we sing a hymn, I can meet you down front, or I can reach out to you by Zoom, and I'll share with you a confession of faith that we find in Holy Scripture. We'll then look forward to your baptism in the near future. Maybe today you have made that decision, or one similar to it, but today you'd like to reaffirm that decision to show others the love that you have within you. We do it the same way. Or maybe today you'd like to join Compass Christian Church and make this church your church home, and we do it the same way. While we sing together and prepare our hearts for communion as well, let's sing Draw Us In, The Spirit's Tether. all of us, a place of gathering, of fellowship, and of praise. So let us rejoice as we respond to God's gracious invitation to receive these gifts of Christ's body and blood, that we may be strengthened to live as faithful disciples of love. Scripture tells us, that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner after the meal, he took a cup and when he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Let us pray. Good morning, Lord. Once again, the communion table is set for us to gather together. We see the bread symbolizing your broken body and the wine symbolizing your shed blood. All are welcome to join together to partake. All that is asked for us 
is to boldly declare our faith to you in your precious son, Jesus. Send us to do your work and let everyone recognize us as Christians in your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, my friends. Thanks be to God. With all the blessings we receive each and every day from our Lord God and Jesus, now is the time for us to share our gifts in abundance and bounty back to those who are in need. Please um, share your tithes, offering, time, and talent. Take these gifts, tithes, and offerings to do your work, multiply them abundantly to help those who are struggling and in need. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Amen. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. Amen. We have a few church life events to share with you. Today, following worship, it's choir practice time. We will meet right over here in this little section. There are, if I could get a a seasoned choir member to help pass out music. It's the five folders that are sitting on there. I cleaned out your all's folders, so they'll be empty when don't panic. Uh, we're starting fresh. 
So there's anthems over there. Meet there. I'll be there as soon as I can. Hope everybody, hope lots of people are staying for choir. In addition, we are having a Bible school preparation time. I'm turning the floor over to Carol. Real loud, Carol. Okay. Teacher voice. Teacher voice. Okay, thanks, Carol. Um, our outreach opportunities coming up, it'll be here before we know it, is our time to serve the IHN. It's now called Family Promise. We need volunteers to help prepare a breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the families in this program. Um, if you have questions or you can help, contact Kirk or Lacey Stewart. Uh, Lacey. Everybody knows Lacey and Kirk. And is that the only outreach? Uh, yes, Tuesday, May 31st, back to back. We will be serving dinner with Stepping Forward at Faith Community United Methodist Church. And I'm not sure if Ed's got that sign up yet. Might be a little early for that, but mark your calendars. And we had some Mother's Day blankets that came in after last week. So we want to make sure that you all see these. So we'll leave that up for just a moment for you all to see those. And are there any other church life events or outreach opportunities? Dawn. Yes, and just drop them by the church anytime during office hours. But if we happen to not be here, they'll be safe on the front under the portico. So just drop them off and we'll make sure Dawn gets them. Any other church life events? Let's stand together for our closing song and our blessing. May God's love call you into the work of justice for all, and may God's love fill you with the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen.